Hello guys, and welcome to the second part in our three-part series of making an Agar.io game in Python. If you haven't watched part one already, watch that first and then come back to this video. So let's get started. So this is the code we have so far, and if we run it, we only get a lot of dots on the screen, but we don't have our player, nor can we move. So let's do that first. To draw our player, I'm going to go down here, and we don't want to draw it if the game's over. So I'm going to start by saying, if the game is over, then I'm going to put you lost on the screen and not draw our player. So big font dot render, you lost, false text color, and then I'm going to put it on our screen, add the position, twin, no, add the position, width, divided by 2, minus 150, and height, divided by 2, minus 40. I found positions that work for me, but you can always tweak the values if you feel like it's not right. If the game is not over, I am going to draw the cell to the screen. So player cell dot draw on the screen at the center, so width divided by 2, and height divided by 2. So if we go and run that, we have our player drawn at the center of the screen. Next step, let's make our player able to move. Because right now, no matter what you do, it does not move on the screen. In a guard.io, the player never actually moves. Everything that's not the player moves relative to the player to get that effect of moving. So that's what you're going to do. We are going to change the player's x and y, but since we are not putting that variables in to the draw function, it's still going to be drawn at the center. So let's do that. So player x dot x position plus equals round. Then we are going to subtract the mouse x minus half the width of our screen divided by our player's radius divided by 2. And then we do the same for our y. Changing the x to y and our width to height. And now we want to draw every cell on the screen relative to the player. So we're going to go down here and we are going to add the player's x and y position to our cell's x and y position. Like that. Now, if we run our program, the cell should move along with the player. There we go. And you see, if I keep the mouse closer to the player, it moves slower. But if I do it far, then it goes faster, just like in the actual game. Next, we are going to check for collisions between the player and the cell. So, we're going to go to the collide check method in our cell class, and we're going to make three things global. That's going to be cells, bots, and game over. You'll see why the last two are used in part three. So inside, we're going to loop through every cell. So for cell and cells, we want to check if the distance between the center of the cell and the center of the player is less than the sum of their radii. So for that, we're going to use the distance formula. So if map dot square root of player dot x position minus half the width of our screen plus our cell x position square that plus our player's y position minus half the height of our screen plus our cell's y position and then we square that then we check if that's less than or equal to the cell's radius plus our player's radius and we want to make sure the cell is smaller than our player because sometimes some bots may be larger than our players and we can't eat them that'll be used in part three so player dot radius now inside here now this is gonna everything inside here is gonna run if the player is touching the cell so inside we want to remove the cell from our list, 
So cells dot remove cell. We want to award the player some mass. So player dot radius plus equals zero point two five. Then we want to check if we are respawning all the cells that we ate. So if we are, we are gonna take the code from here and paste it in there. And that will respawn our cell. Now if we run this we should be able to eat all our cells. And if I eat enough, you can probably see that I'm getting bigger. I can eat the cells, but I don't know how big I've gotten. So let's put our mask on the screen to fix that. So we're going to go under where we checked if the game is over. And say, text is equal to font.render. We're going to put mass. And then we're going to put our player's radius. Default and text color. Then we blip that to the screen. So screen that lit text at twenty twenty. Now if we run our program. I can eat the cells, and I can also see how big I am. Each cell gives us a quarter, so every four cells my mass should go up by one. Lastly, I'm going to put our frame rate on the screen. So, to do that, I am going to go under where we drew our mass and say counter plus equals 1. Remember, these variables were defined up here in part 1. Okay, so going back down, counter plus equals 1, and I want to draw the frame rate in different colors depending on how good it is. So, if it's over 20, I'm going to put it in green. So, text equals font.render fps and i'm going to put a frame rate false and the rgb is 255 or 55 255 55 and i'm going to put that on screen at position 2060 i'm going to copy and paste this three times for three different colors and make those ifs elifs so for the second one, if the frame rate is less than or equal to 20, and it's greater than 10, I am going to draw this in yellow. And if the frame rate is less than or equal to 10, and it's above 0, I am going to draw it in red. So, 255, 55, 55. And now, we have to actually calculate our frame rate. So under here, under there, we are going to put time dot time minus start time is greater than frame rate delay. We are going to set our frame rate to counter divided by time dot time minus our start time. We're going to set our counter back to zero and our start time is going to be the current time. So, if we run our program, it should tell us the FPS, and it looks correct to me, I have pretty smooth gameplay. So, that's it for this video, if you liked it, stay tuned for part 3, coming soon, bye.